Hi, my name is Trish, and today I want to talk about how sphagnum responds to drought and why that response matters regarding wildfire in northern boreal peatlands. Peatlands cover roughly 20% of the North American boreal, storing between 100 and 200 kilograms per meter squared of carbon. That's a lot of carbon. When peatlands are disturbed, that carbon can be released as carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere, which can contribute to climate change. Peatlands are dominantly composed of sphagnum species. Sphagnum are non-vascular plants that play an important role in wetland ecosystems. They act as ecosystem engineers, modifying their environment to favor continued sphagnum growth. Sphagnum creates an environment that is acidic, nutrient poor, anoxic, and wet. They have a very low rate of decay, which helps peatlands sequester carbon. Perhaps one of the most important features of sphagnum is their contribution to microtopography within the peatland. Different species specialize to grow in different environmental gradients. Hummocks and hollows create the typical peatland microtopography. Hummocks are the raised hills, while the hollows are the lower sections in between. Hummocks are typically composed of species from the section Acutifolia, while hollows are dominated by the Cupsidata section. Sphagnum differs from other mosses by having a pom-pom head of clustered branches called a capitulum, and, most importantly, they contain a large number of porous dead cells in their leaves. These dead cells are called hyaline cells, and they are crucial for water storage. To prevent desiccation, sphagnum species have developed strategies of tolerance and avoidance. Both hummock and hollow individuals grow closely together with dense branching to encourage capillary water storage. Sphagnum also doesn't like to grow tall. Individuals that reach above others expose themselves to drying. So because sphagnum doesn't want to grow up, it has to grow out. The changes in biomass can be an indication of stress response. In drought conditions, biomass production and height increments were decreased in both hummock and hollow species. Increase of hyaline cells has been observed in acutifolia, hummock, species, suggesting that hummocks have a greater water holding capacity and that perhaps hollow species are unable to phenotypically respond within the same environment. Interestingly, in wet conditions, hummock species can facilitate hollow species by using their greater capillary action and water storage to maintain an ideal wet environment. However, in dry conditions, that facilitation switches to competition as hummock species directly absorb water from the hollows. So why does any of this matter? Well, when it comes to wildfire, intensity and frequency are increasing, and peatlands have historically acted as a fire break. However, if drought conditions persist, sphagnum will experience extreme stress and drying will continue. Denser peat tends to burn more severely, so because hollows desiccate more than hummocks, hollows have greater combustion. So high burn severity can increase peatland sensitivity to drought, creating a cycle that may be impossible for peatlands to keep up with. It takes at least 20 years for sphagnum to dominate a burned landscape, and with fire return intervals decreasing, it might not be possible for peat to accumulate before a fire returns. So if peatlands are expected to switch from a fire break to a fire bridge, how will that impact wildfire response? That's a lot of carbon being released. How will that impact climate change? Will peatlands survive? It's up to us to decide.